Welcome to your virtual CFO coach. I'm your host, Leah Torbert, founder and CEO of Harrington Strategic Partners. I've spent my entire career working in the startup world, scaling businesses to multi seven and eight figures. I built this podcast to share all of that knowledge with you and make your path to success shorter and easier. Tune in each week as I cover topics, including financial analysis, cash flow management, holistic strategy, mindset, and more. Now for today's episode. Today's episode is the first in a five-part series where we're going to explore some best practices on how you, as a service business owner, can transition from being an owner-operator involved in the day-to-day operations of your business to the CEO focusing on strategic growth and improving your own life outside of your business. Now, this process isn't easy. You've got to do the work to make it happen, but it's 100% possible if you do. There's so much to say about this topic, but I figured I'd start with a heavy hitter delegation. You've all heard that you need to delegate to free up your time, and every one of you listening to this podcast has made excuses for why you don't do it, myself included. So let's start with the numbers. According to a study by Harvard Business Review, businesses that prioritize delegation are 33% more likely to outperform competitors. 33%. Okay, but how about this one? Research from the Small Business Administration reveals that companies with effective delegation practices experience 50% higher revenue growth compared to those without. So you're 33% more likely to outperform your competitors and have 50% higher revenue growth. So why is delegating so hard if we get so much out of it? So number one, we have a fear of losing control. You might hesitate to delegate because you fear losing control over critical aspects of your business. Maybe you worry that delegated tasks won't be completed to your standards or that decisions made by others may not align with your vision. And this might be true, but even if it is, you can put strategies in place to improve it over time. Number two, desire for perfection. As a recovering perfectionist, this one has always been hard for me. Everything has to be just right and only you are capable of hitting the target, except you're not. Perfect doesn't exist. And once you can accept that, it's a lot easier to trust others to do the work. High standards are important, but meeting high standards is also possible and likely with the right tools and training in place. Number three, overestimating how much you can do. How many times have you filled your calendar with meetings and work blocks back to back for days on end? And how many of those days did you actually get everything done? I'm betting that number is pretty low. And yet you keep repeating the same behavior thinking it will be different next time. Newsflash, you are not superhuman. You should not and cannot be the one to do everything. And then number four, you don't want to take the time to delegate. I don't know how many times I've heard, I'll just do it myself, it's faster that way. And I know I've said it myself as an excuse not to delegate. And yes, it takes time to develop a procedure and to train someone to take over for you, especially if you need to go find that person first. But you've got to stop thinking about it as a cost. Delegation is an investment in your business's future and key to your own growth as a CEO. Here's where you have to do the deep personal work. I can tell you that these things are getting in your way, but it's up to you what you do about it. Some people work with a personal coach or have a therapist. Some people just power through it on faith until they get it right. How you do it is up to you, but it's critical that you start the personal work so you can grow into your CEO role and empower your team to achieve your goals. Now remember, you're 33% more likely to outperform your competitors and have 50% higher revenue growth if you leverage delegation effectively. So why wouldn't you wanna do the work to get those kind of returns? All right, so let's say you do the work and you're ready and you wanna start delegating. How do you get started? So there's a concept called the Eisenhower matrix. It's a process where you sort out your tasks and responsibilities into four categories. Category number one is urgent and important. These are the things that you need to do. They have clear deadlines and a significant impact on your business if they're not handled correctly. Category number two, urgent and not important. These are the things that you delegate. Your expertise isn't needed to get these things done, but they do need to be completed. Category number three is not urgent and important. These are things that don't have a deadline yet, but will help you achieve your long-term goals. So you schedule these to do later so you make sure that you don't miss out getting them done. 
And then category number four is my favorite, not urgent and not important. These are the things that you should just remove from your list completely because if they're neither urgent nor important, they bring no value to you or your organization. Cross them off your list, say goodbye, you're not coming back. Be happy that you've just made your list shorter by acknowledging that you don't even have to get those things done. So once you've gone through this process of sorting your tasks and responsibilities into these four categories, then you can start setting priorities. So you wanna focus on category number one, the urgent and important tasks. Then you wanna delegate category number two, the urgent and not important tasks. You schedule category number three, the not urgent and important tasks. And then again, you happily cross off category number four, not urgent and not important. And then we can circle back around to your list of your urgent and not important tasks. These are the ones that get delegated. Maybe you can't do it today, but your next step is to put your delegation plan together. So here are five questions that you need to ask yourself to get started. Question number one, what skills and experience are necessary to complete the task? And how much time is needed on a daily, weekly, and or a monthly basis to complete it. Maybe this task is something that you have to do once a month. Like it could be part of your month end close, for example, to make sure that all of your books are tick and tied and your numbers are good and you know what they are. It's a once a month thing. Could be something daily. Maybe there's a marketing checklist that someone needs to go through. Or weekly, maybe you need to check the customer service queue and just make sure that everybody's been handled and no one fell through the cracks. Then just think about how much time it actually takes to get these things done so you can start thinking about the capacity that will be needed when you hand this task or responsibility off. So number two, do you have someone on your team already that meets this profile or is similar that you could train right now and has the capacity to take on the task? So that reaches back to question number one, how long is it actually going to take? So maybe you have someone on your team that's absolutely perfect for this, but if their schedule is already jam packed, it might not be the best thing to just hand them one more thing to do. You may need to take one step further and go, okay, I'd really like this person to handle this task. They have the experience. I trust them. I know that I can turn this over for them. But then you have to take that next step and say, okay, if I do that, what is the impact on their schedule? Maybe you need to shift some responsibilities around on their plate and give some things to someone else that maybe they don't have to be the one doing. And so you can apply the Eisenhower matrix to other people's schedules and task lists as well to try to balance work out among your team to the people that are best suited to do the work. So question number three, if you don't have someone already, is this task something that you could outsource or do you need someone internally to do it? A great example is bookkeeping. A lot of companies don't do their own internal bookkeeping because it's something that they can trust a bookkeeper to handle that works outside of the firm that specializes in their industry. And then they have someone internally that that bookkeeper communicates with, possibly a coupled people, depending on how large the company is, to be able to get answers on questions and feedback as things are coming through or there could be an internal person that does the billing to make sure that all of that is done. And then the bookkeeper can go back through and reconcile bank accounts and do all the other things and just make sure everything is nice and neat. So you don't necessarily have to hire an internal bookkeeper. You could if you have enough work, but if you don't, then you can consider outsourcing for that versus some other things in your business. Maybe you need an engineer or maybe you have a specific technical person that you're looking for. And so that person you might hire directly instead of trying to outsource that to a third party contractor. Question number four, think about the value you'd get if you were able to delegate the task. How much time would you recoup from your own schedule and what could you accomplish with that time? And then keeping those things in mind, come up with a number. How much would you be willing to pay to get this value back for your day? A good example would be looking at administrative tasks. Think about the value add that you could get by knocking off some things off of your schedule, like having someone review your emails and 
flag the ones that only you can answer and take care of all the other little stuff or getting meetings scheduled, things like that. Maybe you could get a technical admin that has a little bit of industry experience so they could take on a little bit more work for you. Or potentially another thing would be like handling your social media and things like that. All of those little things add up and they take a lot of time, but you don't necessarily have to be the one pushing those buttons. They can review the information with you and then go and take care of things for you. So think about If you have someone that can do all of those things, how many hours of your day or your week does that give you back? What can you go do in those hours that you couldn't do before? What strategic decisions are you making? Are you looking at investments, expansion, building your team, investing in your people? Think about the complete value that you could get from that and then decide how much you'd be willing to pay whether it's internally or externally, to get that work done. And then number five, what kind of training and support is that person going to need to be successful in taking over this task from you? And how long would it take to put those things in place? Whatever you do, don't skip this last question. It's probably the most important question to answer. Remember all the reasons why delegating is hard. A common theme among those reasons is worrying that the task isn't going to get done the way you wanted it to. If you put the effort into creating a solid training program and ongoing support, you've built the foundation needed to let this worry go. Training and support might sound like a lot of work, but it could be as simple as writing a procedure or doing a screen recording of how you want the task done and then being available by chat for any ongoing questions or clarifications. But once you've answered all five questions for each task or responsibility on your urgent and not important list, you can then prioritize what you wanna delegate first and get started. Now, as you start to delegate, you'll have more time to focus on strategic growth. Delegation frees you from the 24 seven grind of running your business. So you can actually focus on what you are best suited to do and empower others in your business to handle the rest. Now, this is part of what I teach in my cash flow ignition methodology. Most of what I've shared today is working on your decisive CEO mindset, helping you make the shift in how you approach your role as CEO and what you want to accomplish with your business. So next we take your vision and priorities and apply them to your current operations using the cohesive cash flow system. Through this process, we align your vision and operations to focus on generating predictable cash flow and prepare your business for long-term sustainability. And the last piece is your cultivated success blueprint. It's your personal roadmap to achieving long-term sustainability in your business and living your best life at the same time. No more sacrificing one for the other, feeling torn between your business and your personal life. The cultivated success blueprint weaves the two together so you have the tools and resources necessary to enjoy both on your own terms. If you'd like to learn how the cash flow ignition method can help you shift from owner operator to strategic CEO, go ahead and schedule your cash flow optimization call at harringtonstrategicpartners.com forward slash contact and let's get started. Thanks for listening to today's podcast. If you enjoyed what you heard today, please share with your network and leave a review so our podcast can have a greater impact. If you have any comments or additional topics you'd like discussed on the show, let me know. Before you go, connect with me on LinkedIn and let's keep the conversation going.